So we do have a tie ball game here. 27-27, we've got uh, just over 30 seconds left to go before the beginning of this second half. We see William & Mary out on the court right now taking some last minute three point shots. Again, as we talked about earlier, a team that is always a threat to shoot the deep ball. And uh, we'll take a look at some statistics here. Again, like I mentioned, Northeastern not shooting the ball particularly well, but they are doing a great job on the boards. That's been what really got Northeastern back into it. They did a good job on the defensive boards at the beginning of the half, so they've been getting that glass all the way through that first 20 minutes, but then they really stepped up their effort on the offensive rebounds later in the half, and that's what enabled them really to, uh, to get back into this game after, after they trailed by nine. Yeah, nine offensive boards, that's huge from the Huskies. They've also uh, limited Quinn McDowell. He's only one for five from the field, uh, one for two from three. So yeah, look, look for him to try to get a little bit more involved for the Tribe, but the Huskies have been doing a great job on him. William and Mary will certainly look to try and get him into this game, get him heated up a little bit. We do see Tim Rustoven getting back onto the floor. He didn't see a ton of time in the first half once he had his two fouls only about five minutes in. But we are back into action here as the Tribe have the ball. They're now going left to right in their green uniforms. Northeastern will be going right to left with the white uniforms. Spencer also has two fouls, so look for him to uh, play good defense, sound defense, sound any fouls. And there's Rustoven looking for a teammate, still has the ball. Northeastern, some fans arguing for a five second call, but either way, they get the ball back. The turnover goes to Northeastern. Great defense from the Huskies. They like to get the big men uh, handling the ball as much as possible, and that'll lead to more turnovers for William and Mary. Here's out wing baby bounce pass over to John Lee inside. Quincy Ford with the right-handed layup. A nice look from John Lee, finding Ford cutting to the basket. Great cut by Q off the ball, really going right through the defense. How Rum is being covered by Smith out on the wing. McDowell to Rustoven. He'll hand it off to Thornton. Thought about putting it up. Now over in the corner, Rum inside Rustoven. Trying to spin around Spencer. He does and puts that one in. Tying the game again at 29. Rustov using, using his height well, six foot nine, using the hook shot, can't block that. Now John Lee back with it. We've seen plenty of aggressive play down underneath the basket for both teams. And again, there was contact on that possession, but like we saw at the beginning of the first half, the officials letting much of that go. Now we do see a foul here as John Lee tried to go inside. Brandon Britt earns the whistle on that one, the first foul of the half. This could be the first time where uh, two players with the first name Q are guarding each other, Quinn McDowell and Quincy Ford. Now here's that play again. A little bit of contact. John Lee has done a pretty good job this season at uh, perfecting that Chase Allen move of drawing the foul. And Reggie Spencer, as he tries to take a shot, he is fouled. He'll go to the line for this one as William & Mary picks up two quick fouls here at the start of the second half. Great job by the Huskies forcing them fouls. Yeah, you mentioned Chase and Allen. He's actually playing over in Israel now, professionally. So we've got Reggie Spencer headed to the free throw line. Comes in as about a 62% free throw shooter. And that one is in. We've got every player on the William & Mary, uh, on William & Mary that's on the floor right now has at least one foul. Rostovan is out there with two. We've also got Marcus Thornton, Matt Rum, Brandon Bitt, Britt, and Quinn McDowell, the starters, as Spencer makes the second and makes it a two-point lead. That's his first two points of the game for Spencer to gain some confidence and knock down some shots now. And here's Rum. Gets it over to Britt. Back up top, directing his teammates. Rustoven all the way over in the corner. Thornton had an open three, but instead drives inside. Can't get the layup to go. The rebound for Northeastern. Doing a great job on the board still. Now Al Wayne Bigby, open three. That one's good. Al Wayne Bigby gets the pass from John Lee and sinks it and timeout Tony Shaver. Bigby with eight points on the game. Really run the floor well. I like how the Huskies push the ball there on a the transition, getting easy open looks. So we see John Lee picking up a couple early assists here as well. Getting that nice pass into Quincy Ford, and then another one, just a left-handed pass out to Outwink Bigby for an open three, forcing Tony Shaver to call a timeout here. And certainly Outwink Bigby 
has started to improve his offensive game the last uh, few matches. I think it was nine points he had at halftime against James Madison last Saturday. So he's stepping up his game again, eight points today, and really playing well. Yeah, he can't be offensive liability, and he hasn't at all. He's really been working on his shot, and he's been hitting some threes, which is a great added addition to his defense. He's really, I'd say he's the most valuable player for the Huskies thus far in this game. John Lee in that first half only had one assist. However, certainly a couple here to start out the second. He's doing a great job leading this team, finding teammates with open shots, getting the ball into the basket. Even if he's not getting the scores himself, he's finding other players that can get the points on the board. And the Huskies have taken a five-point lead here at the start of the second half. We do want to remind fans that today's broadcast is brought to you in high definition. Do note that the GoNU Xtreme portal has two different broadcasts listed for today's game. One is offered in high definition and another in standard definition. If you're using a high-speed internet connection, make sure you check out the HD feed. But if not, you can still enjoy the same great production in standard definition quality. I see some nice little 5-0 run here, forcing uh, Tony Shaver, UNC graduate, to call a quick timeout. Only two minutes here into the first second half. So. Uh, Tony Shaver trying to calm his team down here as they certainly didn't end the first half very well either as Northeastern came back and closed their deficit, went into the locker room with a tie as Joel Smith hit a shot just before the buzzer. Certainly bringing the momentum in. They've carried it very well into the second half. Yeah. <laughs> this game is a must win for the Huskies. They got to uh, represent the home court well and they go to four and two in the league if they can get this win. Get another quick look at John Lee's pass out to Al Wayne Bigby before he sank the open three on the wing. We are back into action now. Tim Rustoven bounce pass inside to Quinn McDowell. And the Tribe looking to work it outside. I like how they're doubling down here on help defense on Quinn McDowell, limiting him to smothering defense. Now inside, Britt trying to find the basket. He cannot get there, but he is fouled, and he will go to the free throw line. And earlier you mentioned how Northeastern didn't have a whole lot of motion on their defense. Certainly seems like, at least on that possession, they were doing a lot more moving around. Yeah, they've been playing well defensively. And uh, Britt, he's the leading scorer for the Tribe right now with eight. Getting to the free throw line. So Britt, an 82% free throw shooter, makes his first. <laughs> Look to bring William and Mary right back into it as we'll see Kendricks Brown check into the game. He'll give Matt Rum a seat. Britt ready for his second. That one short, rebound Joel Smith. Nice board from Jay Smith, blocking out on the free throw line. Fundamental. So now John Lee has the ball. We saw Joel Smith getting a bunch of rebounds towards the beginning of the season, now averaging just under three a game as ball is lost out of bounds. They say last was touched by John Lee. It'll go back to the Tribe. Tough turnover for the Huskies. They will limit those. Well, Joel Smith, as we mentioned, hasn't been doing as much on the, on the boards lately. He had three in the first half and then got one there. So Joel Smith above his season average already in this game. And another foul quickly. This one going against Al Wayne Bigby away from the ball. That'll be the second against Northeastern here in the second half, his second on the game. And don't forget that you can tweet at us. We do have one player tweeting, somebody here at their first basketball game, and they're headed over to Fenway Park as the men's hockey team is uh, playing over there against Boston College starting at 4 o'clock. Yeah, it should be a good game. Chilly temperatures, but Fenway, great place for a hockey game. So we've got Rustoven trying to work around Reggie Spencer, goes to the basket, and Reggie Spencer will get the block. They call the jump ball as he kept his hand on it for just long enough, and Northeastern will take possession. Nice job by Reggie Spencer getting all ball on that one and not drawing the foul. Yeah, great D from Spencer, and the possession arrow is in the Huskies' favor. Now Joel Smith has it, goes back in. Spencer will dribble it outside. Lee trying to get around Rustoven. Now almost taken away by Rustoven as they tried to get it to Spencer. Spins around and puts that one in. Reggie Spencer with a solid spin move to the basket. Dipsy do from Spencer. William Mary was looking for a little travel there. He might have shuffled his feet, but he got away with it. Now the 
Tribe working around the perimeter. Now, along the baseline, I think Quincy Ford will get credit with the block on that one. Put his hand straight up, batted it away. John Lee over to the corner for Smith. Inside, Spencer will draw the foul, and that will be the third against William & Mary here in the half. That will be Tim Rustovin's third. We'll see if Tony Shaver leaves him in the game. So far, no motion to the bench. So Rustovin will stay in there with three fouls, 16 minutes left to go. He's their main big guy, six foot nine, so that's three, that's big on him. John Lee with an open three from the corner, getting the nice look and a nine point lead now for the Huskies. Jay Lee knocking it down. He had five point, uh, three pointers against UNC Wilmington last week. Get the crowd into it a little bit here at Matthews Arena. Kendricks Brown with it up top. He's being covered by Quincy Ford. And Ford almost steals it away, instead knocks it out of bounds. And that will bring us to our first media timeout here in the second half. Of course, we will keep it right here. Again, a reminder that you can watch today's game in HD. Also standard definition if you're not on a fast, uh, high-speed internet connection. Either way, great broadcast quality here. Uh, at Matthews Arena. Video production crew doing a great job for us today. Uh, either way, whether you're watching in high definition or standard definition, and so far Northeastern, they've really come out and put what, trying to put William and Mary away here at the beginning of this second half. Yeah, I mean, coming out with great energy on a 12-3 run right now, first four minutes of the game. Sorry, second half. And uh, they gotta keep it up. They gotta keep up the energy, open shots, keep knocking them down. Really all starts on the defensive end, too. Limiting to one shot, opportunities for the try. Yeah, we'll take a look at the leading scorers so far in this game. Joel Smith has eight for Northeastern. Nobody in double digits for either team. Brandon Britt has nine for the Tribe to lead all scorers. So very balanced scoring also for both teams here. Yeah, both teams don't really have a good well, The Tribe have Quinn McDowell, but the Huskies really uh, spread the wealth very well. Um, Jay Smith with eight and uh, Jay Lee with seven. So they're, they're two main scorers, but uh, also Big Dude, eight is huge. Yeah, both teams coming into this season are all tend to be very balanced. Jonathan Lee, the leading scorer for Northeastern. Joel Smith only about two and a half points behind him at 12.3. Quincy Ford just a hair under 10. Uh, you've also got um, other guys like Reggie Spencer chipping in with seven and a half. And then looking at William and Mary, you've got Quinn McDowell leading with 12.4, and then Marcus Thornton at 11.6. Brandon Britt, Tim Rustovan not too far behind them either. So a couple of fairly evenly matched teams as, as far as the fact that neither one has really one guy that you're always looking to defend. There are a number of guys on both squads that can find the basket. Yeah, and they both score around 60, low 60s. So uh, both teams are looking to <coughs> score around there. McDowell goes up, and Alwayne Bigby getting whistled. Thought he had all ball, and either way, he will earn the foul. That will be his third of the game, third against the Huskies here in the second half. Yeah, tough call on Bigby. I thought he got all ball there too, but uh, the ref did not agree. And blacks have to check in. We'll take another look here. There was some contact, just a little bit too much. Be based on the way that the officials have been calling the game so far. I'm not sure they really needed to call that, but we we did see them go a little bit softer at the beginning of the first half, and then they tightened it up a little bit later on. We'll see if that happens again here to, uh, in this half. He did draw a little bit of body contact there after looking at that a couple of times. So McDowell makes the first, but the second rattles out, and the rebound comes down to Quincy Ford. Hand it back off to John Lee. Point guard for the Huskies. Joel Smith up top, tries to work it inside. Kari Black back out to Lee. Will swing it around the outside again. Huskies looking for those soft spots in the zone. Kari Black playing the high post. Smith tries to pass it over to John Lee in the corner, instead finds the leg of Kendricks Brown. That'll earn the kick, and Northeastern will keep possession. There's 12 seconds on the shot clock as John Lee puts up the floater from the right elbow and gets that one to go. It's a double-digit lead for the Huskies. Jay Lee has a great little mid-range game. That lefty shot's very smooth. So now McDowell getting it out to Boatner. Ford going for the steal there. And he earns the foul instead. That will be 
Quincy Ford's second foul of the game. He and Reggie Spencer eat out, each out on the floor with a pair of fouls. Take a look at it. Again, just reaching in there, getting the right arm, hooking it around on Julian Boatner, getting the foul. You want to see your big man getting fouls 25 feet from the basket on the reach. Here's Especially your big guys. McDowell up top, Boatner again. Now Rustoven to McDowell. Dribbles it around the perimeter, passing it around now. Brown in the corner. Joel Smith gets his hand in there. They say it's a travel against William and Mary, and the Huskies will take it over. Joel Smith getting his hand in there. Looks like Boatner just didn't really have a clean possession on it and dropped the ball, but once you jump, you have to do something with it. Yeah, that was up and down. I think the Huskies have an advantage in the backcourt. They have more experience, more confidence, too. Forward over to Smith, and his pass trying to go across the court for Lee was intercepted by Brown, and that will bring it back to the Tribe. Inside, Rustoven gets the nice pass from Julian Boatner, and that'll be another two points for the Tribe. Unselfish dive from Julian Boatner, finding Rustoven wide open right in the middle of the lane. So they had nobody around him on defense. Now Quincy Ford open, three from the corner. That one is good, and Quincy Ford having a fantastic game today. Great movement from Ford. He really edged out to the side of the court, really getting an open look. You could see him edging out to the, <coughs> to the corner. Quincy Ford right now with nine points and eight rebounds. His career high rebounds is 10. He set that at North Carolina State back towards the end of December. Now McDowell back up top to Boatner. And a left wing three, no good, just a little bit too strong. But McDowell chases down the rebound. With all those three-point shots, there's going to be a lot of long rebounds. So look for the guards to get a bunch of rebounds here. McDowell with a three. That one is good, and that will make it an eight-point game. They'll bring the deficit back within single digits. Yeah, that was uh, McDowell's second make of the game. He has two threes. So you really want to get out on him. Hasn't been shooting very well so far today. One of the only William and Mary players that actually hasn't been shooting particularly well. Now Joel Smith has it. That's a two-point shot. That one is good. They say he was behind the line. I thought he had his toe on the line, but uh, it looks like the official wants to go take a look at it. And uh, Tony Shaver didn't even really have to argue. I'm pretty sure this is going to come back as a two-pointer. Yeah, Joel Smith has really improved his uh, jumper from last year. He's really jumping higher. I noticed last year he wasn't jumping very high, maybe like a couple inches off the ground. Now he's really getting up there. And it's really paid off. It's been great from three. The and officials, long twos. yeah, the officials will take a look at this. But uh, either way, the difference for Joel Smith in shooting that wasn't really all that great between shooting a two and shooting a three. He was right on the line, and they will call it a three. I thought he has had his foot on the line, but they got the extra look at it, so so they will keep it, and we'll take a look at it in just a minute here, but Joel Smith picking up three points for Northeastern and it's 11 point lead and here's the look at it. Joel Smith, he did have his feet just behind the line there. That is a, a nice angle for the officials. They got the look at it. A little bit better angle for me from right behind where Joel Smith sh uh, shot it. And either way, Northeastern gets the turnover. They'll look to push it up quickly again. John Lee going straight to the basket, and a foul will be called. And it'll be an offensive foul called against John Lee. It looked like one of the officials may have been ready to call that a block, and the other one called it against John Lee, though. So it will go back to William and Merritt. I thought he was moving there. Wow, tough call for the Huskies, tough break. Could have gone either way, but John Lee, just his first of the game, fifth against the team, here in the second half. I love how the refs can really look back at the replays and get the call right. And they really didn't have an argument from Tony Shaver there before they looked at it again. The official just decided to go over and take a look himself. He wasn't sure, but now Kendricks Brown has it on the right wing. He'll drive inside, kick it back out, and a three-point shot rattles out for Brandon Britt. Looked like it was going to be good but instead comes right back out of the basket and comes down to the Huskies. That was NBA range from Britt, just in and out. Tough break for him. Smith has his pass tipped away by Julian Boatner, and the Tribe will take it back. Hendricks Brown kicks it out to Boatner, and his shot no good. Rebound tipped around. Quincy Ford picks that one up. 
Now Joel Smith over the corner. John Lee driving the baseline, dumps it off to Kari Black. He is fouled on the way up, and Kari Black will head to the free throw line. Great dish from Jay Lee. Uh, that's uh, nine boards for Quincy Ford, too. John Lee with a nice pass to Kari Black, cutting in along the baseline, found Black right there. Wasn't exactly open, but either way, he'll be going to the free throw line, see if he can pick up another point or two. He's not a very